The following is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. Paint swapping in your face, short track racing. That was the way Mike Miller and his number 18 won the season opener in Jefferson. For the first time in their history, ASA has come to Langley Speedway here in Virginia. This short track is flat as a pancake, only three degrees in the corners. You want to win here, lock it and leave it on the bottom. Make the other guys muscle their way past. That gives the edge to the veterans. But when it comes to ASA races and new venues, the contenders and the veterans both have the same amount of laps. None. A driver that didn't have any laps before coming here this weekend managed to qualify outside of row one. Meeting the contenders, Brandon Sperling. When you're a rookie in ASA, you want to make as many friends as possible. But that's not going to happen at Langley Speedway. You've got to use a fender to get by somebody. If you've got experience, it really helps. And Jeff Bolts does. He qualified eight. Hey, if it's fit for a king, it's got to be good enough for you. So strap in tight to your throne. We're going short track racing, ASA style, next, right here on TNN. years since the ASA series has raced in Virginia, but tonight a packed grandstand will enjoy the Highway and Industrial Equipment Company AC Delco 300 coming your way from Langley Speedway in Hampton, Virginia. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen, joined as always on our ASA coverage here on TNN with my co-driving partner Jim Trado. At our season opener a couple of weeks ago at Jefferson, Georgia, we had a record number of rookies, a record number of cautions, and because it was a season opener, a whole bunch of adrenaline. And Jim, that made it very difficult to find a rhythm to that race. Will this flat racetrack here help that? There are two factors that will determine that. Number one, the pit crew is ultra important. Number one, they have to get in the swing of things on a very tight pit lane. Factor number two, this racetrack is only three degrees banking, so when the teams get the cars right, the drivers have to drive them on the racetrack, and most often we'll find drivers slipping up on the racetrack, which could produce a lot of cautions, but if they get a long stretch of green flag, these teams and these drivers will find that rhythm. Well, we had qualifying earlier here today. It's a one-day show for the ASA drivers, so qualifying was pretty important. Got some pretty good stories on the front of the rows, too. Here's Dave Burns, a third member of our pit crew, with that story. Life is good for Gary St. Amant, Ralph. He is leading the ASA points. He finished great at Jefferson, Georgia. Today, he has put the car on the pole. He's the fastest qualifier. Another thing going for Gary, he's a veteran. He's a known quantity. People know what he can do. For Brandon Sperling, it's unknown. He is in a probably his fifth year in ASA racing, but he's on the outside of the front row trying to impress every time he can. Now, Brandon, you've already put yourself behind the eight ball. You're on the outside of the front row. And at Langley Speedway, we know the line is on the bottom. Have you talked to anybody about getting down and letting you in there? No, I haven't really talked to anybody because we don't really... Anytime you make a plan like that, it never works out, so... It's important to get down early, but I don't think it's that important. You know, it's 300 laps, and if we can just get down there and let things get, things get sorted out, maybe we can get it done today. Now, will you try to beat Gary into turn number one, or are you going to try to maybe get in behind him? What's your plan, if, if any? I don't think I'm going to be able to beat him into turn one. You know, they want a real slow start. And I'm just going to settle in and see if I can tuck in behind them. All right, guys, and I've talked to several of the drivers on the inside. They've had plenty of offers from the guys on the outside, if you know what I mean. Well, you're right, Dave. Getting to the bottom is going to be a key here tonight. Now, also in qualifying, Jim, we had another very big story. Mike Miller, who won the season opener at Jefferson, Georgia, and that number 18 car had some serious problems. Watch this. As Mike comes out of turn number two, the car gets very loose going in and drifts up high. He says he lost it right here and basically struggled all the way down the back stretch to catch it. Couldn't do it. Crashed in turn three. Jim, how bad is this car? He just hit. You heard the impact there. It messed up the trunk a little bit. Mostly cosmetic. The team has repaired it. But again, starting 2030 has a long way to go on this tight racetrack, which may become one group at the outset. It's going to be tough for Mike Miller to fight his way up through the field. Of course, he's one of those veteran short track racers. If anybody can come from the back to the front tonight, Mike Miller could do it. He came from two laps down to win at Jefferson, so you can see how strong he is. Well, that takes care of the business. Let's go racing. So back to Dave Burns to fire up these V6 engines. Ralph, Jim, everyone, this is Carrie Krutzinger, and this is a first for her starting an ASA race. But then again, this is a first for us here at Langley Speedway. So are you nervous, Carrie? Just a little. Just a little. Well, I think you're going to do a great job. Go ahead and get this 300 lapper started. You got it. 
on behalf of AC Delco, Highway and Industrial Equipment in Norfolk, Virginia, and all our wonderful customers, gentlemen, start your engines! The engines have come to life. And after a 15-year drought, ASA has brought the AC Delco Challenge Series back to Virginia, and we're going short track racing when we come back after this. ASA Racing is not rocket science. They do that across the street. See that big building back there? That's NASA. That's a huge wind tunnel where they develop all kinds of special projects to put things up into space, including a lot of work on the space shuttle. But tonight, it's high-tech V6 racing, short track style, and we've got the starting lineup for tonight's AC Delco 300 for you as we get set to go. Row number one will be Gary St. Amant, the current points leader, and alongside of him, he finished ninth at Peach State, still looking for his first win, Brandon Sperling. In row two, Scott Hanson, the Peach State pool winner, and Mike Eddy, the seven-time champ, trying to break a 33-race drought. The hottest driver in ASA, Dave Sensiva, yet to win in the series as the PGG Trucking qualified fifth. In the sixth position, Tim Sauter went from 15th to third in the early stages a week ago at the season opener. Joe Knott, young, hot shot, filling in the reigning champion seat, certainly has things to look forward to. Kevin, you could, you could hit him two or three times, and he would not retaliate. That's the way I want to be, because that's the only way you're going to gain respect in any form of racing, uh, is, is to not beat on guys and do that whole deal. So that's what I want to do, try and accomplish this year. I don't want to go out and be a totally aggressive, you know, beat my way to the front. I want to be able to, you know, just pass the guys and uh, get as far as we can to the front. Highest qualified rookie, Jeff Bolts, rounds out the top eight qualifying. In the next row, Jack Landis, a career time best sixth at Jefferson. Bob Seneker, the all-time race winner with 83. Behind them, Steve Holtzhausen, a multi-time lacrosse track champion, driving for a team that's a former ASA championship winner. And Kevin Noodleman, top 10 finish for the rookie at the season opener. Experienced crew chief turned ASA rookie driver Harold Bear Jr. will start 13th. Outside of that row will be a driver who won one race last year, should have won four. That's Rick Phoebe in the Myers Pontiac. Adam Petty, fourth generation athlete carrying on the legend, will start 15th. Outside of him, another rookie contender, the Roller Skating Association International Pontiac, Greg Stewart from North Carolina. Back in row nine in position 17 is Mike Garvey, a high banks master, struggling on Langley's flat track. And in position 18, Jimmy Johnson, the Pat Shaw Rookie of the Year points leader coming into tonight. Next row back, Danny Dohler, the most diverse racing background in the field. And coming up, a career best 11th place finish, Canadian driver Alec Pisno in the 20th slot. Billy Turner, a sprint car standout, healed up and ready to go, will start 21st. Freddie Bear will be in his second ASA start in the Valvoline Pontiac. Mike Miller, 23rd on the grid, one at Beach State, but he's searching for the speed here tonight at Langley. Also in the field, Peter Cosolino made one lap before crashing a week ago. A lot of ground to make up if he wants to be the season rookie of the year. And the last two in the field, Tim Taylor in position 25, a two-time iCar champ. And Ed Ohilski goes from owner to owner driver. So we are just about set to go now as we get underway with the Highway and Industrial Equipment AC Delco 300, this Langley Speedway here in Hampton, Virginia. Flat, Jim. The speeds are deceiving. They're reaching 90 mile per hour plus average speeds. But looking at the track itself, a pretty symmetrical racetrack. Turn one a little bit tighter than turn two. The banking just 3.5 degrees. Long straightaways, tight corners. We're gonna see drivers drifting up. Two and three grooves develop here as the racing gets hot and heavy. The race analysis for this one, it is the AC Delco 300, so we will cover 300 laps, that's 118 miles. Gary St. Amant, the pole center at 89.790 miles an hour. 26 cars will take the green flag, over 150,000 bucks up for grabs. We got a couple of in cars for you here tonight. Joe Knott, the Tecumseh number one, he'll be starting seventh tonight. Mike Miller, remember, he was the winner, came from two laps down at Jefferson, Georgia. He's behind the wheels of the Drytronic car. And driving the Speed Block Woody's onboard camera is Danny Dohler, starting 19th in car number 31. They send me to the green flag, the AC Delco 315 years since we've been to Virginia. We're underway. Billy Turner spinning and gets hit by. 
by Tim Taylor, and that's actually great news for Gary St. Amant because he had a horrible start. You can see he'd already slipped back to second. Don't know what got Billy Turner sideways, but boy, poor Billy Turner, horrible luck in this series. And the sprint car standout has some of Tim Taylor's car still up underneath him. Left There's front Taylor. fender is underneath the left front wheel of Billy Turner's Pontiac. Tim Taylor of Indianapolis looking to run a Rookie of the Year season this year. And unfortunately for Tim, another problem. He had a problem on the first lap. This obviously was not his own doing as we saw Billy Turner spin. Taylor started farther back in the field and got involved after Turner already went around. Jim, I got a funny feeling. Gary St. Amant probably missed a shift on the start. Watch the number seven wins car on the bottom of the screen, the orange and purple number seven. See how Brandon Sperling comes up to speed and then right there, he missed, he drops down and gets right back up to speed. He must have missed a shift. When you saw off a of turn four, Gary's car lift up. That's when he was on the gas pedal. This is the spin by Turner on the opening circuit. Slows the field immediately, but when Gary got off the gas on the front stretch, the shift, you know, you have to take your foot off the gas pedal to shift. It just, that you could tell by the nose diving down, he was not up to speed. That was a brand new race car, too, for Billy Turner, debuting it here tonight. You can see problems to the right front, problems to the left front as well. Huge crowd here in Langley, Virginia, to enjoy the AC Delco 300. Welcome back to Langley Speedway, Hampton, Virginia. The ASA's AC Delco 300 underway. There is Gary St. Amon. He started on the pole tonight, missed a shift coming to the green flag. Now he is tucked in behind Brandon Sperling, and that's a great break for Brandon Sperling. With this racetrack as flat as it is, Sperling got the jump. Gary was afraid that Brandon might race him into turn one, and with that going through his mind, he missed the shift. Now they start single file, and we're back underway. The two cars that were involved in the incident, Jim, are out. Billy Turner broke an oil uh, strut and also has an oil filter problem, and the radiator's gone on Tim Taylor's number 28. They're behind the wall fixing an oiling system problem as well. Brandon Sperling leads him. Gary St. Amont runs in second and the wins number seven. The Goodrich, the black number 88 of seven-time champ Mike Eddy. Can he break that 33-race drought? He sits in third. That's Scott Hansen right behind him in the white and red number 52. That car owned by Winston Cup star Kenny Schrader. Scott Hansen has something to prove here. He dropped, he broke an axle, actually snapped it in half coming out of the pits on one of the uh, initial cautions. He was leading the race in the season opener at Peach State. Broke the axle, came back. He actually made up two laps under green and was one of the faster cars, but has sold on for a 15th place finish. So if you want to see a hungry driver, watch Mike Eddy and that 52 car, Scott Hansen get On the board with the car that currently runs in seventh position. This is Joe Knott, the Tecumseh onboard camera. This is a car that took Kevin Sawinski to the 1996 Hatshaw Rookie of the Year title and the 1997 AC Delco National Championship. Joe Knott, who inherits this car this year, Jim, he has huge shoes to fill. Do you think he can do it? He's tested here. He's tested at three other racetracks before the season went green. He's got a lot of pressure, I think, on himself. I talked to his father, Ron Knott, before. They think it's a great opportunity. Mike Chaffee's working right with Joe Knott, but it's a matter of Joe Knott finding the comfort level with the team and in this new race car. He said there's a lot of changes from one year ago when he ran a Ford. He's part of a three-car battle for fifth. That's Dave Sensaba just in front of him in that white and purple number six, and in front of Sensaba, the number nine car of Tim Sauter. Sauter was running for Rookie of the Year last year. He has jumped in as a teammate to Alec Pinsano, and that has really been the best opportunity the driver that white and blue number nine has ever had. And Tim Sauter in the nine car had a great run going two weeks ago. It really shows the preparation and the knowledge he has as a mechanic in the racing series. Yes, his father is Jim, uh, Jim Sauter, his brother is Jay Sauter. Matter of fact, he's got a brother, John Sauter, working on Joe Knott's team. So the Sauter family certainly entrenched in part of the history of this AC Double Challenge Series. But Tim Sauter now behind the wheel of the nine car prepares his car and Alec Pinsano's car. They were at his, at his shops in the seat of Wisconsin before the season got underway. Tim didn't have a chance to prove it to himself, prove to the other drivers he's capable of racing. Speaking of Pinsano, that's his white number 93 getting turned around. The guy driving in that dry Tritonics, dry Tronics car, that's Mike Miller, the guy who started 23rd. He's hustling up through the field. Greg Stewart spun over in turn number two, but there's no caution. We're almost getting Association International 
sponsoring this driver out of North Carolina. Really taking over Doug Smokestad's operation. They kept the number where Ted Smokestad was competitor here in ASA for a number of seasons. So Greg Stewart making a rookie run. Got a little out of shape off of turn number two and continues underway. 18 laps are down. As Brandon Sperling continues to lead, getting set to start lapping the field. He's got Alec Pinsno just in front of him. Now white and blue, number 93. The Spurley's going to try to keep as much distance as he can between himself and Gary St. Amant, the second place car. There's Jimmy Johnson, the 44 car. He is the current Pat Shaw Rookie of the Year points leader. And Miller just shoves him out of the way. Now he sets eyes on Adam Petty, the fourth generation Petty. Adam's goal is to get as many laps in as he can. He doesn't want to go racing for the win, so he'll move over and let Mike Bott, and he does. He's also going to school right now with one of ASA's veteran drivers. Won the season opener, only one of three drivers to do what he did, winning two season openers in 30 years of the history of ASA. Mike Miller weeding his way through the field, working his way down. He's in the 17th position right now, and he's going to the front, the speed block. Woody's Pontiac of Danny Dollar is currently in the 16th position. You see Miller nudging him just a bit to get on by. Yeah. All you got to do, and we talked about it at the opening of the show, is use that muscle. You got to loosen the guy in front of you up a little bit, Jim. Get him off the racing line. Get him off the throttle. As Dollar now watches Miller move away from him, and then you try to slide by. You don't necessarily want to spin the guy out, but it is a legitimate move in short track racing to loosen that guy. Did you see something come flying off that car in front of Miller? Might have oh. been Harold Fair Jr. right there. He's not giving it so easy. Miller trying the outside, and Harold Fair Jr., whose father, Harold Fair Sr., has a legendary name in ASA Racing, doesn't give up the position as easily. So Miller now up to what, 15th? And we find experience paying off early on. Harold Fair Jr. had a great qualifying run. He was the quickest on his qualifying lap as he'd been all weekend. He qualified 13th. But we see in these racing conditions where you have to weave and thread your way through. Mike Miller's doing a better job of it than some of these rookies, Adam Petty, Danny Dollar, and Harold Fair Jr. Our speed block, Woody's on board camera, looking back at Adam Petty, who runs in about 17th position. That's free number 45 back entry. Oh, problems over in turn number two. Alec Pinsonneau's car, number 93, spinning in front of our leaders and Gary St. Amon sneaking by. Now remember, Brandon Sperling was behind Alec not too long ago and I had not seen him complete that pass. So I'm wondering if uh, Brandon maybe was trying to get around Alec and uh, something went on there. We'll see if we We'll take a look at the replay of that a little bit later here. So we're going to take this opportunity to sneak away, take care of some business. We'll find out what happened between Alec and Brandon and the guys when we come back to Langley right after this. Welcome back to the AC Delco 300 from Hampton, Virginia. The ASA cars haven't been to Virginia in 15 years, and they're putting on quite a show here already at Langley. Let's take a look at the reason for our yellow. That is Brandon Sperling right behind Alec Pinsano. There was definitely contact there. And Scott Hansen got a very lucky break, Jim. He made room for Mike Eddy, but only after he knew he could squeak by on the inside. What Brandon Sperling saw was a mirror full of veteran drivers coming up on the backside. We saw Alec Pinsano nearly lose the car. He was at the very end of lead lap as he's trying to fight to stand lead lap. Brandon, I think, might have said, I need to get these guys out of my way and get some distance behind me. He might have nudged Alec a little bit too much. Another great start for Brandon Sperling. Brandon has led both races this year. He took it off the start of the race of this one after qualifying outside row two, his career best. Actually, he has a pole to his credit, but qualifying this well this early for Brandon Sperling certainly is a high point for that team. A lot of expectations. Voted the most improved driver from his peers a year ago. Yeah, and he had a great comment about that at the National uh, Banquet at Opryland in Nashville. He said, oh, I guess getting voted most improved driver means I'm no longer considered a moving chicane. <laughs> Indeed. You see, he's got a couple of war wounds on the numbers of the 51 truck air transfer Pontiac, but that's from a race ago. He's got his mindset on leading a bunch of laps here. Five points are awarded for leading the most laps. And ironically, the driver who started on the pole, Gary St. Amant, is the last driver to lead each and every lap on a racetrack very similar to this in his way to winning at Columbus Motor Speedway in 1995. Gary currently runs second. Here comes Mike Miller inside of Mike Garvey. 
remember Garvey in that white number eight. Loves the high bank, struggling a little bit here on the, on the flat track. That puts him up to 14th. And Garvey had advanced from 17th to 14th until Mike Miller disposed of him. Miller started 23rd. He's now moved up nine spots early on here. But it's going to get tougher. That's Rick Beebe in the Myers. Tony's Pizza, number 23, the yellow car on the bottom, and Kevin Noodleman, who is right alongside on the outside in that orange and purple number 21. He gets Noodleman, that'll give him 13th. But BB won a race last year, should have won at least four last year. He's going to be a lot tougher to get around. He certainly is a contender each race, and he, he admittedly said he didn't have the best qualifying run here today because his car stuck so well on the bottom. The left side tires stand the white line to the point where he was actually driving the apron off of turn number four in qualifying, which slowed him down slightly. So as Mike Miller catches Rick Beebe, Beebe uh, showed to be one of the faster cars earlier today, and he may duplicate that in that Myers Pontiac. Well, Miller is definitely quicker than Beebe. You saw how fast he closed up on it, but getting around him is going to be a whole other thing. Now, we've seen Mike Miller able to pass on the outside. He's going to try that here. And a big crash down in turn number one. Adam Petty involved in that. Denny Doler involved in it. And guess who? Alec Pinchno as well. Clear enough. There's your leader coming through there, too. That will put Brandon those drivers early. That will put those drivers a lap down. There's Adam Petty, spree back number 45, and the speed block Woody's number 31 of Denny Doler. Right on, race within a race. Right there are 10 drivers declared to be Bye. ASA, Pat Sharma, one rookie of the year candidates. Two of them just caught up in that incident, lost a lap on the racetrack. There's Adam, trying to get back around. I asked Adam earlier today, I said, hey, you know, your dad, Kyle, he loves to uh, find old books in antique stores and ride motorcycles for a hobby. I said, what do you do? He said, well, for a hobby, I sleep in, and then I automatically go right to the race shop seven days a week. This is a kid who is not at all feeling like he's having everything handed to him. He's earning it in the shop seven days a week. Alephant's in a little bit loose going in. Danny Doler, faster at entry right. speeds into You're the corner. Right. Turn it around. You're okay. Well, let's check in with Dave Burns and see what he can find out down in the pits. What's happening, Dave? Ralph, Jimmy Johnson is in to change a flat left rear tire. And as you know, Jimmy wasn't going anywhere. And I talked to how he let out his crew chief. He said he was very tight. They took a gamble. They started out tight. Other guys took a different gamble, including Rick Beebe, who took a gamble to start out loose, hoping the track would tighten up. And as we saw with Rick Beebe, he was going nowhere. So right now, the track appears to be neutral. All right, Dave, thanks. Jimmy Johnson, the current points leader in the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year, chase for that $50,000 check that goes with that so coveted title. 40 of 300 laps down. ASA Short Track Racing just getting started. Don't go away. Uh, hey, if yeah. you like short track stock car racing, this is the series for you. The AC Delco Challenge Series, having at it in Hampton, Virginia, Langley Speedway. What a beautiful facility here, and what a great race we got going for you as we go back to green with 42 laps complete. Brandon Sperling leads lap 43. The house lubricator, truck air number 51. Boy, Jim, he is getting fantastic restarts. Every time through the gearbox, he is on it. Gary St. Amant, on the initial start of the race, missed a shift. I wonder if he's able to get through the gears properly. These are high buck, high speed transmissions and gearboxes these guys use, especially built for racing. I wonder if Gary may have damaged it or chipped a tooth off in the gearbox as he's trying to get through the gears. Maybe he's not able to get a quick restart. And Brandon gets a sprint away, and uh, Gary has to play catch up when they get back to green. Looking back through the field, there's Dave Sensiba, Joe Nod. Oh, and look at this. Scott Hansen drifts wide. Now, we saw Hansen in that 52 as we go on board the Tecumseh onboard camera with Joe Nod. And Sensiba gets passed, and Nod gets passed and lays a little paint onto the back end of Sensiba. Hansen slid wide when Pinsano and Sperling got together down in turn one. So he obviously has a handling problem. That car is pushing extremely hard going into the corners. And now he's stuck on the outside. Nobody's going to let him in. It's like drafting a Talladega. You get out of line, you're going back. Tried to fight his way back into position with Joe, uh, Jack Landis. Excuse me, will have nothing to do with it. As Landis now goes to the inside of the Maystow Ford. That's the 07 car, that black one. And now Steve Holtzhausen, the black number five to the bottom. No friends for Hampton. And here comes the Bluebird. 83 career victories for the driver, the blue number 84, Bob Seneker. 
Snedeker works to the bottom, but again, Hansen number one is stuck to the outside, but also he washed up going in the corner a couple of laps ago, unable to get back down. He went in too hard into turn number three, and he continues to pay for it here. He was able to get the car right in, but no one will allow him to get back in. Would you? Not if you can put a driver that's so fast every track they go to a, a lap down. I, I can say you got to battle him for position each lap. Look at how Seneca goes in the corner here. Within inches of each other, they continue to race. A lot of confidence between those two veterans. Seneca may even take the spot, but Hansen will have nothing to do with This is actually helping the entire field of racing, with Hansen racing those racing laps on the outside, bringing in the second groove, putting rubber down. He might have a handling problem, but he's also seeing if there's anything outside, and other drivers may see, if he's able to hold on with Seneca here, that there is a second group. There was a late model race run, run here on this track just before the start of the ASA race. It was a 100-lap late model race. They ran with Hoosier tires. Then they ran some legend cars. They run with BF Goodrich tires. The AC Delco series runs with a spec tire from Goodyear, a Goodyear Racing Eagle. All the drivers have said it will take at least 50 laps for enough Goodyear rubber to lay down to be good for these cars. We are now in lap 52. Look at this. St. Amon has dropped back to third, now to fourth. There is definitely a problem with that car, and I'm betting you're right, Jim. It's in the gearbox. He dropped to the inside and let Dave Sensible go by. Mike Getty's already moved into second. Gary's in jeopardy of losing the fourth position. He needs a caution right now to see if there's a mechanical problem or if the car is just that bad loose. Gary's a lot slower than he was earlier. Down a cylinder, we're told. It's a six-cylinder car. Gary now running on five. No, and he just kaboomed the motor. That's it for the wins car. It is done. Gary came into this race as a series points leader and parts now spilling out of the back of the car. Gary needed a caution. He just didn't want to be it. Fourth caution of the race. Coming out here, 54 laps completed. We had a record number 22 cautions at Jefferson. I'm hoping we stay a long ways away from that tonight. Gary removing the helmet here. Certainly had high hopes. This track so much like his home track in Columbus, Ohio. It was like coming to a second home, but wasn't to be. Off of turn number four, he wiggles the smoke. You can see Jeff Fultz doing a great job. There's oil already put down. Fultz on the binders to the inside. Gary could do, do nothing but ride it out, and you see the engine components literally coming, coming out the bottom of the race car. So the Wins Lane Automotive car will definitely lose the points lead. Gary still looking for that first ever AC Delco National Championship. This isn't going to help in that quest. Welcome back to Langley Speedway, the AC Delco 300. 62 laps in of the scheduled 300 here in Hampton, Virginia at Langley Speedway. Brandon Sperling got the house lubricator truck here, number 51, up front, Jim. He certainly did, and Brandon Sperling, if he continues to lead and lead the most laps and win the race, he can score 194 points. Points are very important to the championship. Gary St. Amant, already out of the race, will be credited with 22nd or worse. The most points he can walk away with from today is 94. 100 point hit right there when the motor blew. If Gary is able to win the race, would have been a lot better deal for this team going to the next race as far as the championship's concerned. Dave Burns. Ralph, his demeanor is, I would say, stunned. Um, he's out way too early. We saw the mischief. We saw the puff of smoke. We saw a lot of parts. Tell us what you know. Hey, about five laps before she let go, I think we probably hung an exhaust valve because it, it sounded like the exhaust come loose. And, you know, they, they said they thought they saw something dragging. And, uh, you know, I'm just... Yeah, it's kind of sad deal here, you know, for wins and uh, Lane Automotive and Ganey Trucking, and you know, just was really, really looking forward to coming for, to Virginia here and uh, putting on a good show for the fans. They have a great facility here at Langley, and uh, you know, we'll be back. You know, we'll just get to Bradenton and uh, go down there, and it's about winning races again. You know, we we're just kind of looking forward to a top five finish coming out here with all the vendors, and you know, going on to to Bradenton and. Uh, now we got to get back on it. We got to get get poles and win races. Remember, guys, he was so optimistic too because this track acts so much like his home track at Columbus. Here are two cars that are really having an interesting uh, 180 degree kind of night. The 52 car of Scott Hansen, he started third. He is dropping all the way back to 11. The 18 car, the red car, the Drytronics car of Mike Miller started 23rd. Jim, he is now up to 10th and coming. He is right now. You go on board with him right behind Bob Sedeker's Bluebird 
and coming on strong. Remember, I'll say it again, he was two laps down at Jefferson and came back and won. That required a different kind of patience. That track at 18 degree banking here, handling is everything. Mike Miller is a master of getting the car to the bottom of the racetrack. This veteran knows how to get it done. He nearly won a race at Colorado National Speedway, which has compound banking, only three or four degrees on the very bottom. That's where Mike was able to keep his car back in 94 when ASA ran there. Good at running tra tracks that don't have a lot of banking, and uh, yeah, he won on the high banks last last race at Jefferson, Georgia. But here today, he's also going to be one of the serious contenders. Pontiac's dominating this one right now. The top four positions all belonging to Pontiac. That's your top four right there. Oh, and look at this, Jimmy Johnson. Big problems in the Chevy number 44, Dave Burns. They have got a fire under the hood. They first went under the wheel well with the extinguisher. Now they've shut it off, and they're going under the hood. But he was definitely on fire coming in here, guys. Jimmy's okay. He's going to get out of the number 44. The Herzog Motorsports number 44 was the current Pat Shower Rookie of the Year points leader coming into tonight. Looks like that will change as well before we're done here tonight. Look at Mike Getty. That good wrench back number 88. Jim, 33 races he has gone without a victory. The seven-time champ is as hungry as you can get. Last win coming in July of 96 at Jennerstown Speedway. 54 career victories for Mike Getty, but we call him the polar bear. He's determined. The look he's had in the eyes since the banquet last year, knowing he needs to improve. He was voted the hard luck driver for two years in a row. He said, that's enough of that. I don't want this award anymore. I need to win some races. And uh, again, that's a pretty long drought, the longest of his career. I asked Mike uh, Jefferson, as the yellow comes out, it looks like Alec Pinsano again for the third time involved in causing a yellow. And he's got damage to the left rear corner of the build -a mold trim blast number 93. Out of Windsor, Ontario, owning Bill the Mold and Trim Class, two companies that deal with the big three automakers. Windsor right across the river from Detroit in Ontario. Two car effort this year, and Tim Sauter has now moved to the shops in Windsor, so he's a hands on, and Alex really doing a great job behind the wheel. We'll take this opportunity to take care of a little business so we can keep showing you green flag racing. That's why we're here for ASA. We want to see some great short track racing. I know you do. Come on back. 75 laps complete. You know, Jim Trado's a party kind of guy, and every time his wife lets him throw a party, you know what he puts on the TV? Some of these exciting ASA race tapes that you can get for just $29.95, plus $4 shipping and handling. If you want to get one, call 888-826-0366, Monday through Friday, to place your order. Now, Jimmy Johnson got the 44 Herzog car going. He came back out of the track and then came back into the pits, but it looks like he's coming back out as a cleaned up the fire problem there. Jeff Fultz has also had some good luck in the Jenny King car with Gary St. Amant going out. Fultz has moved up in his pit stall and taken over the pit that uh, Gary St. Amant was occupying. He now runs in 12th, does Jeff Fultz. Jimmy Johnson's 22nd. Dave, what do you know about Fultz? Fultz has no power steering. The power steering belt fell off. He's driving it with old Armstrong steering, guys. Fight for eight, the Drytronics Pontiac of Mike Miller is up to ninth. Remember, he started 23rd, that red number 18. The Ford Thunderbird of Bob Seneker holds the eighth position. Scott Hansen, who started third, is all the way back to 10th in his Chevy. Hansen got shuffled out early. Looks like the car has calmed down where he's not driving in the corner as deep. He may be backing off early, getting into the corner. Here's the fight for six going on just in front of them. Jack Landis in the Adirondack Mesto 07 Ford has another T-Bird glued to his bumper. That's Steve Holtzhausen's number five. And look at Holtzhausen not afraid to use that nose. Holtzhausen has followed Jack Landis with EV's initial 84 laps, but he got a little excited there on the front stretch, tapped him in the rear end. It's one way to say, Jack, if you can't uh, hold that line, I'm right here. If you want to go a little high and let me on by, I'm going to keep tapping down that back bumper. And he's done a great job of that. There's Jeff Bolts. There's Adam Petty in the spree back number 45, fighting with Mike Garvey. That's 13th position is Garvey. Petty is one lap down. But look how racy he is. He's come in twice. They had to repair the right rear corner. They put a big tape patch over that, but Adam Petty has come in twice down pit lane for tires, so he has fresh tires on this car. That may show the rest of the competitors he may be a lap down, but look how fast he is on fresh rubber.
Very few of the lead lap cars have been to this point. Adam Petty did not test here at this racetrack. Instead, he took his dad's Winston Cup car, Kyle's Hot Wheels car, and went to Martinsville and tested for Kyle. And that worked out for both of them. Adam got some experience running on a flat short track like we have here, because that's what Martinsville is, obviously. Also, Kyle was not charged a Winston Cup test. He didn't drive it, and they didn't send his regular crew chief. So it worked out in favor of both. Adam has also done some laps at Talladega for Dad. Pretty sneaky. Dave Sensaba in the six has caught Mike Eddy's good wrench number 88. Interesting thing here, Dave's dad, Bob, is a crew member for Mike Eddy. And Bob Sensaba is as good as anyone, a former ASA competitor as far as setting up the car. He and his son Dave talk extensively about racetracks and setups. That's of his crew chief, another Michigan legend, Chip Caputo, returning to ASA for car owner Leroy Troop. Trying to figure out how this new ASA car since 1992 handles, as he had not been around the circuit full Oh, time. problems in turn two, Jim. We've Freddy got the Bear. 94 car, the valvoling back entry of Freddie Bear. Spinning out, that'll bring out a yellow. I believe that is our seventh caution. Make that sixth. There's Brandon Sperling. On lap 99, diving down pit road, Dave. Brandon Sperling hoping to impress tonight, leading all the way, starting on the outside of row number one and getting the jump. They'll go to the right side and change right side tires. They were just a little bit tight, according to crew chief John Boskin, who works the catch can at the back of the car. They get Brandon down and away, and it looks like he'll be first off. Joe Knott follows him out. Jeff Bolts, Bob Seneker also on pit road, as is Jack Landis, Kevin Noodleman. Scott Hansen came in to get that tire that was losing air fixed. Mike Garvey was in and Danny Dollar was in. Mike Eddy, the good wrench Pontiac, the polar bear driver of that black number 88. 33 races. Mike's gone without a victory. For the seven-time champ, grab one tonight. Stay with us. We're back to Langley Speedway. The American Speed Association's AC Delco Challenge Series set to go back to green. Lap 109 with Mike Eddy out front. Through the three degree banking. Turns one to two, same thing at the other end at three and four. 700 foot straightaways, about 50 feet wide all the way around this racetrack. Turn one and two is tighter than turns three and four. It's rather egg-shaped from the overhead view. And going into turn one, it's very important to get in, get settled, and get out of the gas. Scott Hansen running along deep in the field. What's the story with him, Dave? Ralph, they thought they might have had a tire going down. Instead, it appears that a left front brake caliper has flown. They have the, they have the grease right down here. It's running out, and so he has bad brakes. The steering seems to be fine, too. He was complaining about that, but they do believe the problem is in a blown left front brake caliper. He's listed in 16th place. Hansen can't find any luck. He qualifies well. He started on the pole to Jefferson, started third here today, but, Jim, his racing luck has been horrible this year. He has 17 career victories in ASA and has finished third in the points four different occasions. Runner-up a season ago to champion Kevin Swinski. A lot of expectations. This was going to be a championship run, seriously, and it still is not out of reach for Scott Hansen, but finishing 15th a weekend ago, getting qualifying points, is important, but finishing, as Scott Hansen and everyone else knows, is so important. He may be able to make it up to the top ten, but with that brake problem, this racetrack, as flat as it is, those brakes are half the battle here at Langley. Well, not just finishing, but finishing 16th ain't going to help you any. you got to finish in the top five if you want to win that championship. Mike Miller, the Tritronics, number 18, you go on board with him. He is battling for fourth position with Steve Holtzhausen on the inside, the black number five. This is Steve Holtzhausen's kind of racetrack. Columbus Motor Speedway was kind to Steve Holtzhausen in his early years running ASA. He was one of the first drivers that actually could lift the left front tire because of the lack of banking. He knows how to handle a race car on a very flat racetrack. Yeah, you really did race almost on three tires all the way around the track in Columbus. The other big difference between here and Columbus is Columbus is a complete circle. There really is no straightaway there. You are always turning left. Here there are two straightaways, 700 feet in length. As uh, that Sauter's car, I believe, still kicking up smoke and Sauter all the way up to third. There he is, the number nine. He's one of eight cars at the lead at the point of the field here who has yet to make a pit stop. Brandon Sperling, the race leader for the first 99 circuits, hit it under caution. He's now back in the ninth position. Most of the crew 
Chief I talked to said you could go just about all the way on a tank of fuel. You would only need about an extra five or six gallons to complete it fuel-wise at 300 laps here. Tire-wise, they thought at least just one stop for rights would be enough. Maybe come in for rights and lefts if uh, the yellow spell properly. Holthausen going to try the outside on Sog. A little banging going on there. That smoke continues to come out the underneath the bottom side of Tim Sauter's car. There's a lot of smoke. It seems like it's getting stronger. Now it's reached the rear of the spoiler, so that smoke is becoming more prevalent on the build the mold number nine. And Miller going to come right with him. Remember, they qualified at about 90 miles an hour, and you can see how close they were. So we went on board with Mike Miller. Miller using the high line, and it seemed to work rather easily as we're aboard Mike Miller's car. Look at him going through turns one and two now. He's actually drifting up the racetrack. He's not staying on the bottom. From 23rd to 4th. Back up front, Mike Eddy, the Goodrich Pontiac, out front. Sensible right there again, and you see Sensible able to turn in the corner quicker. Mike Eddy has to let it drift through before he gets back on the gas all the way. BGT Trucking Selective, back number six. Dave Sensible. Interesting, Dave has never won an ASA race. He's probably the best running car to have never won an ASA race. And here's Mike Eddy, 33 race drought. Both of those guys have a lot of reasons to go for the win. And Scott Hansen is the cause of yellow number eight. And he dives right down off of the racetrack. Again, great qualifying and Adam Petty involved. Great qualifying efforts for Hansen. Horrible racing luck. Adam Petty might have been an afterthought as Scott Hansen literally went up in a ball of flames. The left front brake rotor again had a problem. That may have exploded, causing a fire underneath the car. The car was completely engulfed in smoke as it came down the front stretch. Yeah, the fire crew right there. Hansen's keeping the helmet on, though. If that fire can be extinguished, and maybe they can pinch off that brake line. I wouldn't put it past this driver to get out there and take some more laps. He looked pretty frustrated. That's Lisa Smokestad. The tire specialist on the car. Here's Adam Petty's 45 spree car. What happens to him? He Ozzolino. gets hammered by Cozzolino. Drifts up in the corner, two rookies going at it. Look at Jimmy Johnson getting around. And Greg Stewart, rookie's doing a great job. Spurling, not. Now watch this from Joe Knott's car. Down the front stretch. Now it's currently in the fourth position. He sees the action up ahead as we find the Petty Cozzolino spin backs the field up and he finds the grass. And he banged into Brandon Sperling, our early race leader. Yeah, there's a ditch there, Joe. <laughs> we drove over that in a golf cart and that nearly yeah. popped me out of it. Hanson's car still smoking. That's Bud St. Amon in the Lane Automotive shirt taking a look too. Gary St. Amant's dad, crew chief. And let's check in with Dave Burns. Ralph, they're looking at that brake area. The caliper obviously exploded, caught fire. Scott walked away, as you noted. He was disgusted, and I asked him if he was going to try to get it back out. They think they can, so look for the 52 to reappear. And that's all about points. This crank smokes, dad. Pushes the car back to the area. This jam-packed Langley Speedway crowd loving ASA. We hope you are too. Stay with us. We're about set to go back to green, and Jim, a uh, handful of leaders pitted, including Mike Eddy. Indeed, Mike Eddy, as well as Scott, Steve Holtzhausen, Tim Sauter, Rick Beebe. Harold Fair Jr. also up on lead lap came out pit lane. So, indeed, all the lead lap drivers have now finally made pit stops at lap 135. puts Mike Eddy well back in the field. And puts Peter Cosolino on the McDonald's back number 40 into the lead position. Brandon Sperling, who led so many laps early on, is back up to second. Joe Nod is listed as third. Mike Garvey, remember that high bank specialist trying to come to grips with the flat track here at Langley? Well, he is. He's up to fourth. And Bob Seneker, the Bluebird, runs in fifth. Jack Landis is sixth. Jeff Bulls is seventh. Mike Eddy is eight, Dave Sensen but nine, and Mike Miller started 23rd, got his highest fourth. He's back to 10. And Jimmy Johnson moved to the inside. Brandon Sperling on board the Tecumseh onboard camera. 
Brandon uh, Sperling in the house, lubricator number 51 just in front. We go around Jimmy Johnson. On board with Mike Miller. He's got the polar bear up outside of him. Mike Garvey is That's just ahead of him. That's going at him. Man, look at that action. Bob Seneker's Bluebird missing the right front fender. And these are five glass bodies. He may have touched someone just enough to bump the front rivets off that car. To the sneaker was blue. running in fourth, too, Jim. Still is. Bob Seneker in fourth. Dave Sensible working the outside line. It looks like there may be a trail of smoke off of the Wisconsin Aviation number eight of Mike Garvey as he gets off the corner. Garvey a bit slower on the inside. Sensible leading his next train with Tim Sauter. And Steve Holtzhausen to get around the outside and gain position. That's the battle again for the sixth and seventh position. Actually, that's like uh, eight, ninth, tenth, and eleventh going on there. Garvey's uh, dropping back. Look who's also in the picture, the 30 car of Jeff Fultz in 12. He's doing a great job, isn't he, in that Jenny King car? And he had a great pit stop to stay up with his lead bunch. Again, he moved his pit stall to where Gary St. Amant's was. Due to the layout of the racetrack, they pit on both sides of the infield. Prime uh, pit stall has really helped propel this driver up to the bunch. Here's your mid-race mid recap, sponsored by Myers, Tony's, and Banquet. Three leaders, two lead changes, eight cautions, 41 laps run under yellow, five cars are out, and how about this? Driving our lead car, the McDonald's entry, Peter Consolino. Jim, he's a rookie. A team out of Kalamazoo, Michigan, have plucked Peter Consolino from crew member and part-time driver, Peter Consolino, from Joe Knott's operation, and have started a full-time campaign, ASA Rookie of the Year. Jimmy Johnson there in the 44, trying to battle him, as well as Danny Dolo there in the 31. The speed block Pontiac, those drivers are in a tight battle on the racetrack and for overall rookie honors. 50 grand goes to the season rookie champion. There's Dolor, Speed block and Woody's sponsoring this view. Oh, and here comes Mike Miller inside of Mike Eddy. That's for fifth. Eddy comes right back at him, though. Mike Miller's run reminds me of Steve Kinzer at a sprint car race. He tries whichever groove he can. He knows he's as fast as the rest of the field, trying to find what line he may use. He went to the outside. He went up a groove and a half. He's past cars on the outside. We're on his rear bumper now looking at the front end of Mike Eddy's car. He's running higher than Eddy is, too, in the corner. At least a half a groove up. Look at that. As he gets through the corner, he's able to come off the corner better as well. Why is he doing that, Dave? You know? With Rich Thompson as crew chief, and Rich told me that they were waiting for a long green flag run like this because Mike Miller is dabbling with the outside. He thinks he can run up there, and he's going to start trying that high groove. Here's a look at the move that Miller put on Eddie. Classic short track move, bumped him just enough to get at the car a little bit loose and powered on by. There's only a couple of guys that could have gotten away with that with Mike Eddie. Mike Miller is one. Bob Seneger is probably the other one. Those are about the only two guys Mike Eddy would accept that from, don't you think? And we've seen Mike Eddy put that move on quite a few drivers on his way to 54 wins, but Mike Miller going for two in a row here. It's amazing that he started 23rd, spun in qualifying, brought on a new sponsor, Drytronics, for the year, and he's uh, certainly putting out a show again tonight. You know what I love about Mike Miller? Oh, here we go back to our fight for the lead. Peter Cosolino, the McDonald's car, number 40, in front of the black number 51 of Brandon Sperling. Jimmy Johnson spins in turn number two to bring out another caution. You're on lap 166. Listening to the radio conversations with Joe not here. Let's just ride for a minute and see what happens. I'm afraid it's going to tighten it up too much if we go to left. That's crew chief Mike Chappie. Joe runs in third. And notice the conversation is too late. Career, we can probably just try one more right side stop there. That's Ron, not Joe's dad. I mean, the last, the last change, they looked like they were brand new. Folks from Racing Electronics bringing you this conversation. Joe fixing his helmet. Dave, you got the leaders. Mike Eddy is in, and one of the reasons he may not have been able to hold off Mike Miller is because the car was loose. Howard Thomas tells me they're going to reduce the split, reduce the stagger just a little bit, and that should tighten him up as they add the left side tires and fuel to Mike's good wrench Pontiac. Dave Sansima, Jeff Fultz, Mike Miller, Rick Beebe, Mike Garvey, all taking advantage of this caution to adjust their car. Hey, we got a
a good one brewing here at Langley Speedway. Some guys like the Fords, some guys don't. Welcome back, Hampton, Virginia. The first time we brought ASA here, there was one other racetrack here in Virginia, Lonesome Pine Speedway in Virginia, where they used to run in. Four races, and Alan Quickie, Mike Getty, and Dick Trickle owned those four events. They finished first or second. Eddie actually won one. Quickie won one. Trickle won twice. They ran here four times in the Commonwealth State in 1982 and 1983. Peter Gosolino in the McDonald's car was having a whole bunch of heat applied to him from Brandon Sperling just before that yellow. with the flapping bodywork, by the way, is up to fourth in the 84 car, the blue Thunderbird. Could it be he'll get the victory tonight that matches the car number? Wouldn't that be something? Now, keep in mind, Mike Miller made the pass on Mike Eddy by giving him a nudge at the right front fender. Bob Seneca might have done the same, but he will not be able to do that again. We see the nose cone crushed in on the 84, but if you need to pass by nudging him along, Seneca's at the disadvantage. That is a great point, Jim. That is something that a lot of these guys need to do. That's actually a part of your strategy here tonight. And you're right, Seneca's really going to have a hard time doing that. Jack Landis again, right behind Bob Seneca. An awesome run. He tied his career best finish of... Oh, big crash in turn one and two. They will bring out a yellow. Could there have been a huge four wreck. cars involved. Alec Pinchino is the only one who doesn't really get through. That Mike Eddy was in the middle of all that, but I think he got through on skate. Tenth caution of the night. Remember, we had a record 22 cautions. Again, this track is getting a bit slippery. Teams have gone over 100 laps before making pit stops. Here's Mike Miller's view from the Drytronics car. They stacked them up. Alec went sideways. He might have spun to avoid. There were cars bottled up in front of him as well. Look at Eddie getting through. Noodleman on the high side of him. This one shouldn't take too long to clean up. We should be back to racing here shortly. Could have been a lot worse with Alec Pinsino sideways. There are still 12 cars coming into turn one. They all avoided him. Here they are backing up the white brake smoke out of Mike Miller's car. Just missed the six car of Dave Sensiba. Could have flat spotted a tire. Very easily could have. And again, only two tires are allowed to be changed at any point during a race that uh, is contested at a track under a mile right. Exactly. But if he comes in under caution, he can only do two. They don't ever change fronts either. If he had locked down the fronts, he might have a flat spot to live with for a while. The Brandon Sperling is the new leader here at Langley, the highway and industrial company, AC Delco 300. Brandon, back up front. Welcome back to the AC Delco 300. Mike Miller brings a Drytronics Pontiac down pit road. He took on right side tires. We are under caution due to debris on the racetrack. With 192 laps completed of the scheduled 300, Jim, he might not need any more right side tires. Uh, the 100 laps, just over 100 to go. That's plenty. Mike Eddie proved to be fast with that many laps on his tires before making a pit stop. If you wonder what Drytronics is, it's actually an electronic way to remove water from inside building walls. They actually insert a probe into the wall and electronically blast away with an electronic blast any water or seepage in the wall itself. So it's a great inventive way to... Uh, I guess keep the walls dry, and they've had some great success stories, but Drytronics coming on board with Mike Miller for the season. Doesn't hurt to be on a car that's won the first race and certainly in contention to win two in a row. Boy, Dave, Mike Miller's had an up-and-down night. What are they saying in his pit? Well, they're hoping it's going to be up. Rich, the track seems to be loosening up, but you guys seem to have the opposite problem. Was he too tight? Yeah, the car's a little tight. Um, been wearing the left rear out, got the new left rear on there. The car's just way too tight. We're not getting the long green runs. We need to get the car loosened up. So went ahead and put a new set of right sides on on the car, getting ready for the end of the race. Can you go till the end now? Absolutely. All right, confidence in the Mike Miller pit. And a new crew chief for Mike this year. Rich Thompson taking over. Carl Highland is now working with Gary St. Amant's crew, and Bill McGowan still calling the shots there on the seven car, but uh, certainly a great start to the season, winning the event. Rich Thompson making the right calls. Anytime the drivers change a left side tire and the right sides have wear on them, the left sides being fresher will cause a handling problem like Mike Miller's experience, a tight condition. So until those tires equal out, he's going to have his hands full. Are you seeing smoke out of the back of the Tecumseh number one like I am? Been about a lap, last 50 laps or so. Joe not. once he went through the infield, he may have maybe crushed the oil pan a bit. Hey, how about that? Mike Miller inside of Peter Cozzolino. That's good for a spot, like 14th. 
started 23rd, did Mike Miller, got all the way up to fourth, dropped back a handful of times, has worked his way back and forth, up and down through the field. He's got to do it one more time with about 100 to go. They award a dollar for every car fast. Mike Miller would walk out of here making a lot of money. He's Boy, passed a lot of cars tonight. He could still come out of here as a points leader, too. He came into the race second in points. The points leader coming into the race, Gary St. Amant, went out in the first fourth of this race. Gary back in 23rd is where he'll finish as we see Mike Miller's car coming on the backside of Danny Dollar's Pontiac. One of 10 rookies in the race going for the $50,000 Pat Charm Warren Rookie of the Year honors. Scott Hansen has now just also come back on the racetrack, so that brake problem fixed to the, temporarily. To the outside goes Miller, gets around Dollar. That's good for 18th. Actually, no, that was not for position. Dollar runs in 18th, Miller's up to 13th. He's got to get around Tim Sauter to get another position. Jimmy Johnson is laps down as well in the 44. Sauter is just in front of him in that blue and white and red numeral number nine. Oh, and Stewart in and out of the infield in the 32 car. He was, stay up, green. he was up in the sixth position, came in under the last batch of caution flags and came back out amongst the lead lap cars that fitted. So a great run going, got pinched down to the bottom. We saw the transition, just three degrees banking, but the pit lane itself is completely flat. We saw sparks as he tried to make the adjustment to get back on the racetrack. To the front we go. Brandon Sperling leading Joe Knott, Bob Seneger, Jack Landis, and Steve Holt out in your top five. And well, guess Mike what? Miller. Mike Miller and Peter Cozzolino in turn three bring out the yellow. Now, Miller was trying to get around Cozzolino, had gotten around Cozzolino, hadn't he? Peter Cozzolino almost tagged Mike Miller's car that was already spun. Mike might have gotten a little bit confident in overdriving as he was picking off about one car a lap. He may have driven to turn, two, turn three a bit too deep. Couldn't save it. Plenty of clean track oh, ahead of me. Bump the wall on the back stretch. Race drivers love a freed up race car. He felt the car drift out to the wall. He'd stay out there. He let the car go where it wanted. He could put it anywhere he wanted. That time he just got out to the wall and brushed he, it in the middle of the back stretch. Mike Miller coming down pit road. Mike Getty's already there, as is Dave. Ralph, he's going to change right side tires. They are still loose. They're trying to tighten them up a little bit more with this change, and they'll send a seven time champ back out with that and a full load of fuel. Crew Chief Howard Thomas changing the tires on the front. Mike is set to go. He's good for the next 96 laps, which is what we have left as Mike Miller gets some new tires on his number 18 as well. So the ASA's AC Delco 300 set up for a less than 300 gunfight to the finish. We'll be back. NASA's Langley Research Center is right across the street from Langley Speedway. NASA was created back in 1958, but Langley Labs was established in 1917. The research that has come out of Langley includes the experimental X-1 project, which saw man break the sound barrier and led to America's preeminence in military fighter aircraft. The Mercury program, which took the first American into space, also originated from Langley Research Center. And today's space shuttle is the result of a lot of research and development done right here at Langley. There's the wind tunnel, which is located directly off of turns one and two. There you see, now the wind tunnel here at Langley is so big, Jim, that they can put four cars in a pack inside the wind tunnel and test drafting out and a lot of teams now in the world of racing starting to come up here and rent space at langley to test their race cars what i'm bummed about is that i guess the uh blue angels were here yesterday on a test run they went to an air show somewhere else and we missed them i i didn't see them yesterday but it would have been so cool to see those guys i heard a lot about it going straight up climbing so you couldn't see them anymore and coming straight back down that would have been awesome to see it's a great show the blue angels and the thunderbirds if you ever get a chance to see either one make sure you do it our blue angel is bob seneker he's got a whole pack chasing him he's also a thunderbird he's got a bump going on seneker could be the guy tonight he certainly can, and again, it doesn't look like he's going to come down pit lane anytime soon. He and Jack Land as a pair of Fords chase the Pontiacs at the point. Brandon Sperling and Joe Knott 
Joe Knott actually started racing ASA out of Gary St. Amant's race shops. They spent the first two seasons in Gary's shop. They tested, they raced a lot at Columbus Motor Speedway, a flat race track we keep referring to, but a track that's rich in tradition of the ASA series. Last time there was 1995, but Knott's experience in coming into this racetrack has to give him a bit more confidence knowing how he can handle this race car and actually working with Chaffee set up a bit more because of the familiarity of the track surface being as flat as it is. We see the result here. Knott's running a strong second. Here's what I see. Here's Brandon Sperling, that 51. He's been close to winning a few times. While leading, has had funny things happen to him that have knocked him out. He's desperate for that first win. Joe Knott, who runs in second, is anxious to prove that he can fill the shoes of Kevin Sawinski, who won the national championship. Oh, and a crash in turn around. number two. Steve Holtzhausen spins, collects himself, but Denny Dollar doesn't. He brings out a yellow. Let me finish this thought for you here real quick. Joe desperately wants to show that he can fill those shoes for Kevin Sawinski in that number one car. So pressure on Joe. He'd love to alleviate and get some of that out of his system here tonight. But Bob Seneker runs in third, and his nickname is the Sneaker for a reason. He loves to lay back, watch everything develop in front of him. He knows he's got two young guys in front that are anxious to get wins, and as they come to the finish, they're going to be laying it all out there. Bob knows now is not when that race is won, but on lap 300. It's going to be interesting to see what the sneaker strategy is here tonight. Dave Sensible, the purple and white number six. Just ahead of him is Steve Holtzhausen. Holtzhausen through the corner. Sensible may have looked low. Holtzhausen came in the corner and drifted up just a half a groove. Enough to get Holtzhausen and Sensible some contact. Sensible actually drove through Holtzhausen. This better angle here shows that Holtzhausen was going through the turn. Just lifted the rear end by Sensible. Sensible sneaks on by. Mike Garvey It'll be great to see Holtzhausen try to charge his way through the field as he's pitted now for tires, but as we take one more look... Mike Miller's view. Oh, and Mike Getty got the hood damaged. Look at that. So the 33 race streak might go to 34. He's on pit road right now. Holtzhausen's in. They've taken the hood off of uh, Mike Getty's car. What are they doing to Holtzhausen, Dave? They're going to change two rear tires, Ralph. They're trying to keep Steve just a little bit tight. Duke Spangler, the crew chief, says they're actually very confident about Steve. That's just what they didn't want to have happen, a spin. But he feels very good about the car. They keep him a little tight because the track continues to loosen up. So he's down the way with two fresh rear tires. We've got to keep an eye on these two drivers again. We're closing in to 75 or so laps to go. Mike Getty, Steve Holtzhausen, we're, co we're running their own race in the top five throughout the day. Mike Getty with that problem. They took the hood off the 88 car. Now Steve Holtzhausen, two rear tires to keep the stagger similar. We mentioned Mike Miller earlier, another veteran coming down pit lane, changing lefts that upset the handling of the car. By changing the rears, Holtzhausen's able to keep the stagger and put two fresh rear tires on. Strategy starting to get played out here at Langley Speedway in Hampton, Virginia. It's going to be a good finish. Make sure you stay with us here on TNM Motorsports. Coming to this beautiful Langley Speedway has been highly anticipated by all the ASA teams. we got to thank the folks here at the Speedway. Wayne Wyatt and Chuck Hall have done a great job in building this beautiful facility here in Hampton, Virginia. You can see the jam-packed grandstands here at Langley. They love their ASA racing. I think, Jim, this is going to be a, a regular stop on the tour for years to come. Brand new aluminum grandstand. Suites put up less than two months ago have now been sold out. They're installing an elevator on the back of the uh, tower, so they'll be the only short track in the country with an elevator heading up to the control tower in the suite area, which is great PR and great move when it comes to selling these booths and saying you can bring your family, you can bring your sponsors, and have a good time. And it saves us walking up a bunch of steps. I like that. <laughs> Joe Knox smoke continues. You know, we're still seeing that. There has got to be a problem with Joe Knox number one. It might not be anything that uh, is keeping the Tecumseh back driver from running up front, Dave, but is it something he's going to have to worry about down the road? Mike Chaffee says there is no problem. He says the car is fine. They hadn't seen any smoke. That was news to them. And he says they're doing fine as far as their communication goes. Joe is calm. So for right now, it's a mystery. Well, it sure looks to me like it's smoking, Jim. Yeah, it certainly does. And it's just coming out of the middle, the back of the car. There's no buildup. We don't see it covering up the Tecumseh logos on the rear tail of the, of the one car. Let's see. Watch him down into one. There it is. 
constant puff throughout the corner. It's not it's not a billow of smoke, it's just a constant little trail of smoke coming out. It's dark in color. So white would equal water, blue would equal oil. Can't really tell which is which, but obviously you'd have a problem with either one of the gauges if it was a lot of oil leaking or a lot of water leaking. Bob Seneker, who runs right behind him, there he is in the blue number 84. He was having trouble getting that JR Automation Thunderbird to get an even flow of fuel. He said the track is so flat, the fuel was bobbling inside in the carburetor. So they were having some trouble adjusting that to get it to flow the way he needed it to. And that's obviously paying off here. He's running third, a very strong race again. 73 laps to go, but look where Seneca is. He's in contention. Jack Landis, again, just on the verge of continually running top 10 each race. He finished sixth in the opener, tied a career best. Now he's up to fourth. He might even find himself on the podium. Here's your rundown with 228 laps of the 300 scheduled. Complete. Sperling, your leader. Joe Knox, second. Seneca, Landis, Sensible, your top five. Harold Fair Jr. up to six. What a great run for that rookie driver. Tim Sauter, Mike Miller is eighth. Noodleman up to ninth. He's a rookie, as is Greg Stewart. He is 10th. Mike Garvey is 11th. Mike Eddy and Steve Holtzhausen running 11th and 12th. Harold Fair doing an awesome job. And Greg Freed's number 80. 1-888-90. Jamie on the rear quarter panel. There's Again, Miller. Jamie's a youngster going through some serious health concerns, fighting cancer, also a great member and a spiritual leader, really, of his team, undergoing some treatment. They're trying to raise some funds through his church in Michigan, so if you've got a chance to give it a jingle, one 90 jamie to help Jamie out in some of the medical costs and his ongoing treatments would be much appreciated. Miller gets around him. That'll make him uh, sixth. Harold Fair Jr. has Harold Fair Sr. in his pit. He's telling his son to stay cool, be calm. And that's something that Harold Fair Jr. had done for his dad for about 10 years straight. You know what I love about Mike Miller in that 18 car? Here's a guy in his 50s who, in the early portion of his ASA career, only what? Won one, two races? In the back half of his driving career now, he is like on a tear. Won three races last year. He's up to seven victories now. He might end up coming out of here tonight as a series points leader, conceivably a contender for the championship this year. Dave Burns, how is Brandon Sperling going to get into victory lane tonight? They're not going to pit. And to a man, the crew chiefs down the line in the top five say that they will not pit except for Mike, uh, for Mike Chaffee with Joe Knott. They said if we start going backwards, we might take the gamble. But the problem here at Langley is that the surface is so smooth that new tires did not make that much of a difference. The old tires are good to go. And as we've already said, they're hard. They're going to last. So Mike Chaffee and Joe Knott, they may be the only ones to take the gamble. Everyone else, they're staying out to the end. Brandon Sperling has opened up a 1.25 second lead over Joe Knott. So Knott is obviously holding up the guys behind him, Jim. Mike Miller's the story, though, watching him lap after lap. It's great. He's yet to go to the inside. He's passing guys on the outside. The fans are moving to the edge of their seat. He's gaining fans here. First time in 15 years a visit to Virginia, but a lot of fans will remember the charge tonight by this driver, Mike Miller, out of Marietta, Georgia. And it's not, as he gets into Jack Land, it's not the first time we've seen this. He came from two laps down to win at Jefferson, and we go under yellow again. Jeff Fultz spun over in turn number two, and getting and to Washington, Pinsano, getting himself to the wall. Is Pinson on the inside here on the front straightaway. Long night for Alec Pinson on the trim class Chevrolet. Jeff Fulton, the Janet King Chevrolet, had a great run going. He spun over in turn two, brought out this caution. He's able to continue away, but Alec Pinson, as a result of a different incident under the same caution, is looks like maybe through for the night. A lot of body damage on the front end. The wheel is cocked. Yeah. Well, with Alex smoldering in the uh, front straightaway, we'll take a break. Boy, this one's building up. Can Mike Miller come back two weeks in a row? You don't want to miss this one. Alec Pinsano's crew working to get the damaged body pieces away from the number 93. So Alec can complete some more laps here. 244 are in the books. We're going green.
really the leader, and Joe Nott have pretty much kept the same distance ahead of Bob Seneker. On this restart again, Brandon Sperling with a great jump. Nott follows. Seneker's running third, and that fender continues to hang off. And round one thing I'm concerned about is Bob Seneker's attitude after this race, because that right front fender is able to hold on for the last 200 laps or so. Yep. He'll be bummed when he can't pop rivet that fender back on that nose piece because too much has been rubbed off on the racetrack. Yeah. That's what his disappointment will be from this race. Bob's kind of a frugal guy. When he can reuse body parts and just get out the fiberglass kit, he'll do it. But uh, we'll see how much is rubbed away and how much that thought goes away if he gets a better finish here. Third right now, Joe Nott, that little bit of smoking might become a factor in these closing laps. The winningest driver in AC Delco Challenge Series history in the 30-year series of ASA competition. Bob Seneker has won 83 times. Whoa! Mike Miller loosens up Jack Landis a little bit. Here is the show. Yeah, Couldn't get around the outside. Speedway Nesto car. Oh, look at Miller. When he was running down the outside and passing everybody, Jack Landis got nice and wide on those straightaways, and he couldn't get around. So Mike Miller now goes to the inside, and then Tronics Pontiac. Oh, spin. Jimmy Johnson. Turn three. Four. Peter Coslina also spun. Yellow. Trials and tribulations of a rookie. Well, Jim, 16th caution. Have we found that rhythm yet? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Mike Miller's found the rhythm. Oh, boy. But nobody else has the radio but playing had, like his. He was the only one that had the rhythm last time. There is Mike. Builds his own chassis from the front nose piece and the rear clip, they call it. The actual center section is a standard piece issued by ASA. Comes from Howe Engineering. Oh, Rick Beebe, the Myers Tony's Pizza back number 23, got into him. Well, there's a good look at the pieces that are underneath the hood of Alec Pinsano's car. The ASA car is kind of a uniquely constructed machine. Earlier, Dave Burns had an opportunity to take a look under the hood of an ASA car. Okay, so you love watching the ASA stock car racing on the track, but maybe you're a little sketchy on the details surrounding the car itself. Well, I'm here to help. Let me start with the outside of the car. Look at the body. It's a beautiful body. It closely resembles a showroom counterpart, but it's made of fiberglass in about 12 pieces, which means it's lightweight, it's very cost effective, and if you break a piece off, you simply go over to the shelf, you pick up another one, you pop it on the car. While we're up front, let me show you these headlight decals. About seven years ago, ASA started putting them on their stock cars, and now everybody does it. We talk a lot about tires in racing. In the American Speed Association, the bias ply tire is king. No inner liner, no radial construction. The advantage is these are very cost-effective tires, about $100 per corner. The disadvantage is the teams have to play a little bit more with tire stagger to make the car just right. What about inside the car? Well, you always have to have a great suspension, and in ASA, they employ what they call a coil-over suspension. What that means is the spring is actually over the shock absorber. That saves space, and it saves weight, and weight is key in racing. ASA cars have mufflers. Whoever heard of a stock car with mufflers? ASA has been doing it for a number of years for fan comfort. If you lose your hearing, you can't get it back. And ASA cars only run as loud as 99 decibels. Another ASA innovation is the 9 to 1 low compression motor. In fact, they're so good, everyone's using them these days because they last a long time and they're cost effective. Now, in an ASA car, you have how many cylinders? Six. But that factor and the low compression does not mean low power. Power to weight ratio is key in racing. The ASA car weighs 2,900 pounds. The V6 motor puts out about 480 horsepower. What that means is they are fun to watch on a short track. One of the best things about the AC Delta Challenge Series is the rule book that Rex Robbins, the president, and Brian Robbins, the vice president of this series, have put together. They've developed a great rule book, which provides us with some fantastic racing action, as you've seen here tonight. Good close competition. I like that. And Alec Pinson is showing a little bit more of that chassis than he wanted to. Again, yeah. the fiberglass front nose piece peeled away. Something scraping on the bottom. It looks like a brake duct. Some sort of hose there, yeah. Mike Miller. What a great jump on the inside. What an unbelievable start. 
Seneker has got his hands full. Bob Seneker, the blue car on the outside, the winningest driver ever in the history of the series, tries to fend off Mike Miller on the inside of that red and white number 18 who's looking to go two in a row. Miller's got him. Now Sensima tries to come along. Sensima, the PGT Spectra. Selected back number six on the inside of Seneca. Keep in mind, all Seneca had to do is stay in the gas, stay on the outside, but when Sensima got inside him, he knew he was going to lose that battle. He only burped the gas and got back in it and got back in line. Miller going for second here, Ralph. Unbelievable race from Oh, Miller. he got into Joe Knott. Knott does a tremendous job of saving it. Joe comes right back on him. Look at the bumping and banging down the back stretch. That's going to give him, not going to give him the position that easy. He came down on Mike Miller to prevent him from scooting on by. Hey, Joe Knott has tried to be as patient as he could be all night tonight. He has done a wonderful job of staying patient. But now, he's got Miller all over him. How patient will Knott be now? And look at Miller on the brakes hard. a second and a half advantage now over not oh and miller gets in him not again he won't turn him but he gets him loose not cuts right back down on him you can look in the cookie jar but he slammed the door shut on him not's car is definitely slower jim the only way mike's gonna get up the outside but we've seen him do it and here he goes will joe not give him the room boy the fans here up on their feet loving this Look at Knott now drifting wide, pushing him high. Oh, he's not being patient at all anymore. Joe Knott, don't forget, folks, in that number one, filling the shoes of the guy that won the national championship in that very number one last year. That's a reigning championship team. Think there's some pressure on him? You bet. Miller deep on the gas. Oh, uh, this rubber band's going to break. <laughs> Talk about trust in a driver. They had their scrape. Joe Knott could not hold him off. Miller gets by. Here comes Mike Getty on the outside. Where'd he come from? He's up to fifth. Polar Bear on a charge. You thought he was out of it when he bumped that car on a, on a caution, ripped the front nose off, or the hood, excuse me. That has not hampered his efforts whatsoever. Meanwhile, Brandon Sperling is just getting farther and farther away from the, this fight going on. There's Sperling. There's Miller. Here comes Mike Eddie, who now has third. Here's a good fight. Joe Nod and the Sensiba. Seneca and Jack Landis watch from great seats. Now on board. Now car a bit slower, but he's not giving up the fight. He's staying on the inside line, making these drivers earn it. They heard Mike Chappie tell Dave that they knew the car was going away and a problem over in turn four jeff bolt's involved yellow is out that is the one thing brandon sperling did not need to see with 30 laps to go now he's got mike miller mike getty all right on his back bumper the only thing in his advantage he's been getting those great starts with joe not behind him it was slow anyway mike miller oh that's a whole nother dog ready to hunt back there Oh, uh, this is going to be good, folks. Can Mike Miller get it two races in a row from 23rd to a win? Stay with us to find. Again, this season, you have the opportunity to win a unit in Bearcat Scanner along with a one-year Racers Frequency membership from Racing Electronics. Just send your name and address on a postcard to Racing Electronics, P.O. Box 241921, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28224. We'll announce the winner during each ASA telecast on TNM throughout the year. So send in your card today. This week's winner is a dedicated race fan, Beverly Trompaugh from Concord, North Carolina. Congratulations, Beverly. I know you'll enjoy your scanner from Racing Electronics. Bob Seneca came in just as they were about to get the one lap to go signal. His right front tire had come off the bead, so his fender flew off under green. He was running in the top five, and he had the misfortune of losing air pressure, and the tire came off the bead. Seneca now in 14. Brandon Sperling with Mike Miller all over him, and here comes Mike Eddy. You can't necessarily detect the outside, because if you go out there to stop Miller, Eddie's coming up the inside. Where do you go if you're Brandon? Down the middle. Okay. Miller slipped in four. That gave uh, about a car length of a gap for uh, Sperling. They got Alec Pinsano as a lap car in front of him. Look out, Alex. Here comes the freight train. 
for the first time in five minutes. Brent, I think Brandon Sperling's finally taking a breath, but now he can't hold the breath too long. Joe Nutt, by the way, all the way back to fifth. Dave Sensima runs in fourth. 277 laps to go, less than 30 to go. Mike Miller just gave a shot on Brandon Sperling's house lubricator Pontiac down the backstretch. He wants a lane. Well, Miller's got to get around him as quick as he can because he knows Mike Eddy's just as hungry. You can't wait, you know what I mean? Once the hole opens, Brandon Sperling goes from first to fourth, so he's protecting yep, yep. it any way he can. Oh, boy. Now, we've seen Mike Miller, Jim, use that front nose a lot to make moves. Get in there, wedge the guy, like we said at the beginning of the show, you got to muscle your way through. You think he's going to do it on, on Sperling? You bet. Look right there. There it is. He muscles him past. Comes Mike Miller into the lead. Now can he hang on? Mike Eddy won't wait too long on Sperling. He's going to go to work on him in a hurry. But can Mike Miller open up a big enough gap with that dry Tronics number 18? He knows he's got to go now while Eddy in the Good Ranch Service Plus Pontiac has to deal with Sperling. I think Miller's probably more concerned about Eddie than he is Sperling. What do you think? Sperling has a lot older tires, so actually Sperling now will become the buffer between Mike Miller and Mike Eddie. You see Brandon washed up just a bit that time by. Mike Miller bumped him and got on by. Mike Eddie let him save it that time, but Eddie knows it's just a matter of time. He won't do that for much longer. Look at sense of his charge. He's certainly doing it. With Mike Getty, he and Mike Getty have been kind of connected all race long. You know what's not happening here is Mike Miller is not pulling away as quickly as Sperling did when Joe Knott was running in second. But Mike Getty now losing a little bit of ground here. I don't think Mike Getty can go to the outside. Sperling oh. has held the inside. Mike Getty's lost ground. Oh, look at this. Sensima tries to get up inside of Eddie. One foot on the brake, one foot on the gas going in that corner for Sensiba as he almost pitched it sideways as he looked inside the door closed. You know what? I think Mike Eddy might have lost a cylinder. Maybe uh, Dave Burns can confirm that for us. But it didn't sound right when he came by. Dave Burns, do you know anything? We're all looking at it down here, Ralph. It sounds sick, and everyone I talk to who's nodding their heads, he is down a cylinder. be the last bullet in the gun that had a shot at Mike Miller unless Brandon Sperling can make something happen here. And the impact Mike Eddy hit another car with buckled the nose up. It might have just popped the plug wire off also, which still oh, spells. Way finally loose, yep. yeah. That would lose your cylinder. Trouble. Danny Dolar spins over in turn one. And Adam Petty involved. That'll bring out a yellow. That'll give Brandon Sperling a shot at Mike Miller. Adam Petty's goal of the first race of the season, keep the fenders on, get some laps in. Well, unfortunately for Adam, he's been around a lot of the cautions, gotten there late, so he's learning how to stop and avoid cautions on the racetrack, but that comes with a little body tear here and there. No oh, here we go. Into Johnson. That was Vinny. You're in good shape. Get back going. Go. Punch it. All right. Dolan and his crew chief talking on the radio, brought to you by Racing Electronics. But you notice they ever so slightly touched, and yep. it upset the car that much where Danny Dolan spun. There's Mike Eddy. No, that's the 30 car full. Like a radiator hose bracket came loose, and a couple of clamps were hanging down below the Jana King Chevrolet. Mike, with 10 laps to go, not about to pit. Nine laps, eight laps left to go. Mike's going to try to hang on for track position. Not worry about being down one cylinder. Try to hold on and garner points. Brandon Sperling did not get the great jump that he had all night long, and it cost him, Jim. Dave Sensiba now up to the challenge to try to wrestle away second. Sensiba's finished second four times in his ASA career, the 94 Rookie of the Year. Certainly putting it together tonight for Leroy Troop and the gang, his teammate Adam Petty, struggling in a different sort. Success and struggles can describe Leroy Troop's two-car effort tonight. Sensiba came into the race all the way back in 21st place in the points. He needs a good finish here tonight to become a contender again. Sperling came in ninth in points. This will help move him up in the rankings. And Mike Miller, who currently leads, came in second. So if he can hang on, he will be the new point leader as the series moves on to DeSoto Speedway. Mike Eddy down a cylinder in that Goodrich Service Plus Pontiac trying to hang on. Pick up as many spots as he can. That's a fight for fourth with Jack Landis on the outside. That'd be a career best finish for Jack Landis, the Adirondack National Speedway, 07. 
Mike Miller out front as Dave Sensaba has gotten around Brandon Sperling for second. Can he catch Mike Miller and do something with him? PGT Trucking and Selective Storage with Spree along for the ride with Sensaba, their best run of the year. White flag will be out for Mike Miller. Here he comes. It's going to be two in a row for the Atlanta Georgia native. Mike Miller, sponsored by Drytronics, is going to visit Victory Lane for the second time in a row in 1998. Two races in the 98 season. Mike Miller has won above from 23rd to Victory Lane. an unbelievable deal. He started 23rd, fought his way up, then back to the field, and Mike Miller has won here tonight at Langley Speedway as he captures the victory here tonight in the Highway and Industrial Equipment AC Delco 300. We'll be back to talk to him right after these words. Well, you're going to be reading about Mike Miller in the next issue of Action Line. You need to subscribe to this great information line when it comes to the American Speed Association. Write them at P.O. Box 325, Pendleton, Indiana, 46064, or call 1-888-ASA-1020 so you, too, can get all the information you need on the ASA. Let's check in with Dave Burns in Victory Lane. All right, this scene is getting pretty familiar with uh, Mike Miller, uh, Mr. Miller, another fantastic drive, but tell me, did you start out with a complete race car after that uh, little mishap in qualifying? Well, yeah, the guys put the back end on, uh, you know, put it back together very well. Well, I know one thing, I didn't make a lot of friends today, but I'm not in it to make friends, I'm here to survive economically. But this was not a track that was going to build friends. I mean, you were going to have to root your way by to win, right? Yeah, it was. This is uh, one of those racetracks that uh, you can't, uh, you don't have any buddies out there. I want to thank uh, Ray Slayback from Drytronics. Thank you, buddy. All right, Mike Miller, he wins again the second time in a row. And the last time that's been done, 1995, Mike Eddy started out the 95 season with three in a row. Can he do it? We'll find out. That we will, Dave. Here is a look at your win's unofficial results. You'll notice Pontiac taking four out of the top five positions with Ford sliding in there in fourth. Mike Miller, Sensabuck, goes to the podium for the fifth time in second place. Still no first victory for Dave Sensabuck. Brandon Sperling got close again. Led the most laps and finished third only the second time he's been in the top three in the podium. Jack Landis, career day, best finish in fourth. Mike Eddy soldiered on for fifth and, and the low closing laps lost that cylinder. Steve Holthausen, a great run coming back from that spin in sixth. All the way back through 10th where you find Mike Garvey as we work our way through the unofficial results. Brought to you by Wins. Seneker, he was a hot shot for a while. He ends up coming home 11th. Adam Petty in 16th. Jimmy Johnson went around a few times. He was in 18th. Peter Coslino led a bunch of laps. He'll come home in 20th. And rounding out the field, Scott Hansen, two veterans on this page. Scott Hansen and Gary St. Amant, 21st and 23rd. And now let's take a look at our wins winning move here tonight at the AC Delco 300. Took place on lap 280, coming off of turn number two. Mike Miller, as you go with him, muscled his way past Brandon Sperling. That's tonight's wins winning move. Now the point standings, remember, coming into this one, Gary St. Amont was a points leader. Mike Miller is your new points leader. Brandon Sperling was inside the top ten, but his great run to third will move him up to second in the national point standings. Jack Landis, Joe Knott, again a consistent run, fourth in the points. Steve Holtzhausen couldn't do anything better than 17th for most of the year last year, already fifth in points, a great start for that team. This is only the second of 20 races scheduled for the AC Delco Challenge Series in 1998. Plenty more races coming your way, including May 2nd at Bradenton, Florida, May 23rd in Nashville, Tennessee on the half mile there. Of course, the TNN cameras will be there to cover that one and the one in Rougemont, May 30th in North Carolina. Two-way communications equipment for the AC Delco Challenge Series is provided by Racing Electronics, the official communications of the American Speed Association. ASA Racing is produced for television by Silver Fox Sports, Charlotte, North Carolina. For Dave Burns, Jim Trainer, and all the great TNN TV crew, I'm Ralph Sheen. So long from the AC Delco 300, where Mike Miller has won his second race in a row. We'll see you soon.